Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. What we're going to be doing today is a quick rundown of how to add shadow caustics to an object in Blender and then a few simple tricks to get them looking a little bit brighter and more exciting. So let's begin. So in order to save some time, I've already modeled a little bit of a cup object here, a vase, something you might see uh, on online at a modern uh, modern home goods store or something. Some nice ribs there. Basically, when you're working with caustics and blender, it's nice to have a little bit of an irregular shaped glass object just to create a little bit more of an interesting pattern and sort of confuse people a little bit because the caustics and blender are not that fantastic. So. Already got that set up. If you want to see how to make that, I will add that section at the end of the video, but wanted to jump right into the main purpose, which was showing you how to set up basic shadow caustics in Blender, and then just a really simple trick to brighten them up a little bit. So I'm going to press Shift A and add in a plane, and then let's scale that up. This will be our ground object just so that we can see our shadow caustics, and then this is obviously our casting object. So let's get the viewport set up a little bit. I'm going to drag out some new windows here. Um, this one could say a 3D view, but let's go into rendered view. And by the way, this is only going to be working in cycles. So make sure you're rendering in cycles. Uh, and then up here, I'm going to make a shader editor. So let's first get our sky set up. You could use an HDRI um, or you could just use a lamp texture or sorry, a lamp, but I'm going to add in a Nishida sky, which is now just called sky texture. Oh, they have these other ones. Anyways, um, looking great. We've got control over our rotation and everything like that. So good. I'm just going to bring the elevation up so our shadow isn't quite as long. And then let's go ahead and start with the material. So I'm going to press new and you can name this glass if you'd like. You don't have to. Um, but for a basic glass, you could use the glass shader, but I'm just going to use the principal shader. So I'm going to bring the roughness pretty far down so that it's shinier and then the transmission will bring all the way up to one so that we have sort of a, a glass object. Now, you don't have to have the roughness be zero. Sometimes it's good to bring it just a little bit above zero just because it'll kind of blur your caustics a tad and, um, and just you know make any artifacts less visible. So that is set up pretty much how we like, but we are not getting caustic. So there are a couple things we need to set up. So first of all, in the shading tab on the object, let's have this cast shadow caustics and still nothing. Let's go to our plane object and I have this receive shadow caustics. And then lastly, in our sky texture under the settings, we can turn on shadow caustics for this as well. And you can see now we are getting shadow caustics. Now make sure your object is shaded smooth. I've noticed that if it's flat, you will not get as good or maybe any caustics. So make sure your object is shaded smooth if it's not. Um, but yeah, this is working fine. Now to brighten them up just a tad, of course, we could change the default 0.8 value here up to a one. And that's going to do just a very little bit for us, but not a ton. So basically the trick here, and it's uh, embarrassingly simple, is to add in, um, basically we want to adjust this index of refraction value. So when I was playing around, I noticed that a lower index of refraction is going to let basically a lot more light through and you get much sharper, much more interesting caustics, but this does affect the realism of our glass object. So the default value of 1.45, I forget exactly what that's for, but that is, um, yeah, it's pretty realistic, I suppose, for glass or maybe it's set up for water, not positive, but 1.45 looks good on the glass, doesn't look good on the shadow. So we want to control, we want to have sort of two IOR values, one for the shadow and one for the glass. And the way I'm going to do that is by adding in a layer weight, or sorry, a light path node. Tricked you there. And then we want to use this diffuse ray input and have that control our index of refraction. Now what this is outputting is values of either zero or one for, um, you know, for the, yeah, the, the ray that's being cast. I'm not, <laughs> not particularly good at explaining what all these things are, but diffuse ray is the one we want. But we do need to control, basically we don't want a value of zero or one for anything. We want to control that. So I'm gonna add in a map range node. Just drop that right there. And then if we start playing with these values, you'll see that basically one of them is controlling the shadow and one of them is controlling the object. So uh, for this one, let's bring that back up to like the 1.45. We can just type that in. 
and that will be affecting our you know, primary glass object, what we're actually seeing right here. And then this one is affecting the shadow. So as you might have guessed, let's just pull this to a, a pretty low value. And again, I'm not going to claim that this is realistic by any means, but it's just a way to make it look a little bit better. So you can pull that super low. If you go to one, it's going to be not working, but just really anything, just a hair over one, maybe like a 1.1, I think looks pretty good. So that is about it. Now, another thing you might want to do to just make this a tad more interesting is you could add in a, you could add in a new website from the best ever and easiest to use website creation tool, Squarespace. Squarespace is a perfect way to take your digital glass renderings, poster business to the next level with a bunch of easy to use, readily available, beautifully designed templates. Squarespace makes a website setup process easier than ever. When I first started my own business doing 3D rendering, I knew I needed a website and how did I create it? You guessed it, Squarespace is how I set up my first ever website, complete with a portfolio and a contact feature. Squarespace has preset sections that make it easy to drag and drop a contact form so you can get your business going and give clients a place to reach out to you. Get started today with 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain by visiting squarespace.com slash Dirk. Don't wait another second. Click that link in the description and get started today. Gradient texture. This works great with color and that really helps make it pop. So let's add this gradient texture into the color here. And then I'm going to press control T. Uh, this is with the node wrangler selected to affect um, my mapping. Now generated is fine for the input, but I want to rotate this texture. So if we take a peek at it here, you can see that we need to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate 90 degrees on the Y axis. So that now our gradient is going from top to bottom. And then I'm going to add in a color ramp right here. And then now we basically have uh, that working properly. So you, know, you can make this sort of whatever color you wanted an amber or something like that would look good. I think uh, <laughs> I was watching my buddy Kaizen, uh, his tutorial on this, and he made a similar gradient and it just looks pretty good. So um, that looks nice. Affect this as much as you want. You could even add in another stop here to have it get a little tinge of red at the top or something like that. You might have seen something like this in your grandmother's house, but this style is definitely coming back. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, what else might we want to do here? I think that's really it. Um, other settings to be mindful of are the the sun size, so or you know the size of the lamp you're using. But a, a smaller sun is going to give you sharper shadows, and a a larger sun will will distort them, smooth them out a little bit. And that's another way to help avoid artifacts. It's just to to pull that sun size or whatever your lamp is, um, scale that up a tad so that you you know just get a little bit of blurring happening on the shadows and um, kind of helps add in I would say a little bit of a realism but for true beautiful caustics you can pull that all the way down to zero so that they're nice and sharp um, so that is about it what else could we do um, you know the sun's strength in this case if you're working with the sky by default is usually pretty high but then you could turn up like the sun intensity and that'll really start to pump those caustics up to a, a kind of a nice look and then just something I would always do is go in the color management and change this to very high contrast just so it's a little poppier. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty solid. The only other thing I did do, and it's not really necessary, but um, sometimes if you use values greater than one here, like if we turn this to a like a 50, you can see that it gets crazy bright. But again, don't want it on the object, but it kind of looks cool on the shadow. So what I might do is add in a hue saturation value node here. And then um, if we turn this value up to something crazy like a 20 um, and then do the same thing we did here, just plug in this diffuse array into the factor, then you can see that we are not getting the effect on the glass, but we are getting it on the shadow. Um, and now we have, yeah, like that super, super bright looking caustics. This might be getting super unrealistic, but, you know, you can drop that back a little bit. And all in all, this looks pretty cool. And now you could use this too, you know, if you wanted to make the hue of your shadow different, if you're making some magical render or something, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, here's the shader setup that we have here. I'll go ahead and make it full screen just for a second in case you want to copy it. Um, this will be available in the Patreon file, by the way, along with the model. But that's the shader setup. 
Super simple, you know, again, just be thinking about the roughness here, this IOR value, and then just have some fun with your glass in the color ramp here. So if we go back into our view here, let's make another shader. I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate this, bring it over, and let's take, uh, let's do glass, and we'll call this glass no mods. And I wanted to just show you what it looks like without it versus with it. Um, so plugging this into the base color so that we remove that one, and then let's disconnect that. So again, there's our default on the left here, and then the modified version on the right. Once again, not going for extreme realism here, but I'd say if you're going for a stylized, bright and poppy look, then uh, using these slight modifications definitely adds to the appearance just a little bit. So hopefully y'all liked that one. Uh, like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and move into that little modeling section if you're interested in creating this object. Oh, one other quick little note on the um, light path settings. I'm using all the default values here, and it still looks pretty fine. Uh, if you go into full global illumination, things might get a little bit better looking, but it's going to take a lot longer to render. So I use the default values, but make sure none of these are too low, um, particularly transparent. And then um, I guess transmission. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna mess it up for sure. So this transmission value should be, you know, I guess at least 12 or so. And then these options, I believe, are on by default, but make sure those are on if something's not working. Yeah, besides that, I mean, this this is all pretty much default. Another thing I've seen in other videos is that, you know, you might not want this direct light clamping, so you could turn this to zero, and that will let a little bit more light through, might get things a little bit brighter, but you start to get some fireflies, which usually the denoise will remove those. Another thing is maybe this filter glossy, if you turn that down, that might do something for you, but. But really, this is the bulk of it is just this um, this one shader with these slight modifications here. So, anyways, let's move on. Thanks for being here. Okay, so to create a little bit of a vase object, like a like a ribbed one, like I used in the example, just want to show you real quick how you model that in case you're interested. Um, because you know when you're working with caustics, it's nice to have a little bit of an irregular shape just to create more interesting patterns on the ground. So, I press Shift A and added a circle. Shift A mesh circle and the default 32 vertices is fine here but you can adjust that as much as you like i'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and then press f to make this a face and then e and z to go up which by default it looks true along the normal so you actually don't necessarily need to press z um, and then i'm going to press i to inset this face at the top and then e and z to go down to somewhere about there maybe we scale that in just a tad so we have our basic cup object here, but uh, for the caustics, you need a, a pretty dense mesh. And the way we're going to do that is by adding in a subdivision surface modifier. And you can keep this pretty high, maybe three levels, um, which of course now creates some issues with our shape. So I want to add in some edge loops. I'm going to press control R to do that. And then on the bottom here, I will select this face and then press I to inset. And we'll just do that a couple times. Basically, we're trying to avoid the triangle fan pattern that's happening there. Um, so just adding in more edge loops, in this case with inset on the circle, that will sort of do that for us. So that's looking a little bit better. Let's go ahead and add them on the inside as well. Let's pull one to the top. Let's also add one here on the outside, and then one on the bottom. And then let's inset this face on the bottom as well. Looks like I need to pull that up a tad. Um, let's press I to inset it, and just do it a couple times. So now we have a much more dense mesh. You can see when we uncheck optimal display, that's what we're left with. So that's a pretty basic cup object. And this works fine for caustics, but you know, like I was mentioning, to get a little bit more of a interesting pattern and just sort of to confuse your viewer a tad because caustics in Blender aren't that great, um, adding more detail is a great thing to do. So I'm going to press Control R to add an edge loop, and then I'm going to press Control B to bevel it. And now we basically have created two more edge loops. But now with these faces selected here, I'm going to uh, press F3 and search for checker deselect. And what that will do was is deselect every other, or you know if you adjust the options here, you can kind of control what that's selecting. But the default will select every other one. Now with those still selected, I'm going to press E to extrude, and then S Shift Z to scale out a little bit, and just like that we will have our ribbed pattern. 
So S and then shift Z will extrude along the X and the Y only. It basically excludes the Z axis. Now, if you didn't want these to be so kind of rounded at the top, you could add in another edge loop here, maybe on the bottom as well, just to get that looking a little bit more regular. If you wanted to make a gear, this would be another great way to do it. Um, now from here, you can just go in and sort of adjust the height as you would like. Maybe go up, maybe scale it out a little bit, bring it back down. That's kind of interesting. You know, maybe you want a, a slight rotation to your object there. That's sort of interesting. I don't love it. Do whatever you want though. You, know, you can maybe fan this out a little bit. Let's extrude it up and out. And yeah, now we just kind of have a modern pot that you would see on West Elm or CB2 or something like that. So anyways, uh, hopefully that was helpful. And if you didn't already have a glass object that you wanted to add caustics to or to practice with, then here you go. Uh, this uh, object as well as the shader will be in the file for my patrons. So feel free to check that out. But yeah, so that's it. Hope you all enjoyed. Please share in the comments if you have any other tips on improving caustic since I know they aren't great, but I'm sure our lovely developer community is working on it. Please like and subscribe. And if you follow along with this video, feel free to tag me on Instagram or elsewhere. I would love to see what you come up with. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely day.